folks, the Filipina be here. If you're dating a Filipina and she suggests having dinner with her folks, then you need to watch this video. Because I'm gonna tell you how to successfully navigate the evening. In the West, meeting a girl's family might not be something you do right away. It can have connotations of a more serious relationship and might even be an important step on the path to marriage. So if you've only been chatting with a Filipina for a few weeks and she asks you to come to dinner and meet her family, you might be thinking it's just a casual gathering like a barbecue with friends and has no particular importance. Wrong. It means the exact same thing here. It just happens a lot sooner. Traffic may be slow in this country. Lines at the grocery store might be slow. Filipinos in general are slow. But one thing we don't waste any time on is introducing you to our folks. That happens at a light speed. So if you want to know how to make a good impression on her family and avoid looking like Ben Stiller from the movie Meet the Parents, then let me give you the inside scoop on what to expect. Remember that her mom and dad are going to be sizing you up and trying to make sure that you're a good fit for their family. If your family circle joins my family circle, they'll form a chain. I can't have a chink in my chain. Now, if your Filipina suggests taking her folks out to a restaurant, be advised that it's not just going to be her father and mother. It's going to be her entire family tree, from third cousins to old family friends, and may end up being in excess of a dozen people. Also be advised that you're paying. Now, before you start saying, yeah, of course, you're going to stick it to the foreigner, the custom of having the boyfriend pay is the same whether or not he's a local Filipino. But if you want to save a bunch of cash by shifting at least some of the cost of the evening back onto the family, I'd suggest going to her house instead. So the first question you might have is what to bring. Are you expected to come bearing gifts? Well, if you're fresh from the West, it is a nice gesture to bring what we call pasalubong, which is basically a souvenir or a gift from your home country. Favorite things include chocolate, cigarettes, soaps, lotions, and even clothing, like jerseys with logos of professional basketball teams on them. If you've been here a while already, at least bring a sack of rice, a case of beer, or maybe some wine. Most Filipinos consider champagne a luxury, so bring some of that if you really want to impress them. But please, remove the cork carefully. <laughs> oh. Oh. One last thing I'd make sure to bring, not as a gift, but for yourself, is some toilet paper because many Filipino households don't use it. So you might want to discreetly put some in your pocket to avoid any uncomfortable situations. So what do you do when you first arrive? Well, the first thing to remember is to remove your shoes outside the door before entering, as is the custom in most Asian cultures. When introduced to her parents or grandparents for the first time, Take the right hand and hold the back of it to your forehead while saying Mano po, which means your hand please and shows respect. This is true even if you happen to be older than her parents. In return, any children present will probably then do the same thing to you, taking your hand and pressing it to their foreheads. Unlike in Western culture, do not call her parents by their first names, which would be considered disrespectful. Call her father, tatay, and call her mother, nanay. The grandmother should be addressed as lola, and her grandfather, lolo. Aunts and uncles get auntie and uncle put in front of their first names, like Auntie Juliet. Unless you're really good at remembering names, this can be a daunting task, but just do your best. And refrain from too much physical contact with your girlfriend in the presence of her family. Holding hands is usually okay, but even light kissing in front of her relatives is considered in very bad taste. And now for the fun part of the evening. Depending on the family and how fast they want to get to the point, the intense questioning may begin. It's an antique polygraph machine. Oh. Have you ever watched pornographic videos? No. Relax, relax, the needles are jumping. You'll probably be asked many things that would seem rude in Western culture. 
including your marital history, number of ex-wives, why you're here, how long you're planning to stay, your intentions with their daughter, and your occupation. You know, Greg's in medicine too, Larry. Oh, really? What field? Uh, nursing. <laughs> During this time, you're expected to talk and tell them about your life, but be sure to avoid what could be considered as bragging about money matters. Don't use any sarcasm in your narrative, and try not to talk about things like geopolitics. You lose them within seconds. Just keep it light and informative, so they get a feeling for who you are and why you're there in their home. Contrary to what you might expect from citizens of a deeply religious Catholic country, religion won't be talked about, and we don't typically discriminate against non-believers. So if you haven't been to church in a long time, or never, you'll be happy to know that you'll get a pass on that subject, and won't be required to recite scripture in front of an audience. And now for dinner. Her family will have laid out their best cutlery and plates for you, which means that instead of the cheap bendable Chinese-made utensils they usually use, tonight you'll find the shiny, thicker metal ones reserved for honored guests. Instead of the paper or plastic plates they probably use when no one's around, they'll have set out the good stuff, real ceramic plates. You'll notice that only a fork and spoon are provided, no knives, and if you ask for a knife to cut your meat, chances are they'll hand you a meat cleaver or giant carving knife. If they're really trying to impress you, they may have a lechon, which is a roasted suckling pig. Lechon is a big deal here, a luxury, a high-class meal. And as the guest, you may be invited to do the carving with that big knife you wish was on your plate instead. Before the actual meal begins, some traditional families might say a prayer. You probably won't be asked to lead the prayer, but you're always welcome to volunteer if you dare. Oh, dear God, thank you. You are such a good God. Now for table manners, which are probably quite different where you come from. Filipinos often eat with their hands, family style. So even something like a pile of rice or fish might be consumed with the fingers instead of using cutlery. Unlike in the West, you'll also find that drinks are often missing from the table, as many Filipinos don't eat and drink at the same time. So if you want something to drink with your meal, you may have to request it or pour it yourself. We often chew with our mouths open, so be prepared for a chorus of lip smacking during dinner. It's also acceptable to slurp your noodles or soup. So a noisy Filipino dinner is usually the norm. It's considered rude not to try everything on offer. So even if something looks unappetizing, just have a small taste to be polite. Even if you're not familiar with our language, here are two simple phrases that can be used during dinner to impress your hosts. If you like what you're eating and want to compliment the chef, say, Masarap, which means yummy. If you've had enough food and want to decline further offers, say, Busog na ako, salamat, which means, I'm full, thanks. Just saying a few things like that will pay respect to our culture and win you big points for their family. After the meal is over, it's also considered polite and a show of how much you enjoyed the meal to look directly at the mother and pass gas as loudly and forcefully as possible. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Just kidding. Do not do that. Unless you never plan on coming back. Actually, I should have said I was kidding just to get a whole bunch of nasty emails a few months from now from angry and embarrassed men who were forced to explain that P made me do it, which would have only made matters worse and caused the parents to think you were totally not in control of your bodily functions. <laughs> anyway, after dinner comes drinking time. Typically, everyone drinks from the same glass which is passed from person to person between refills and shows they trust each other enough to use the same container. The proper salutation when beginning to consume is tagay, which means, you guessed it, drink. 
you might be offered a potent beverage called tuba, which is a homemade or locally produced cocoa wine made from fermented coconut sap. If it's been distilled for a year or more, it can be very strong and is not for lightweights. Drinking with her father is encouraged and a sign of bonding and acceptance. But if you're not able to handle your alcohol, watch out for this stuff if you want to avoid any embarrassing confessions. My future mother-in-law, Dina Burns. You know, they say if you really want to know what a woman's going to look like when she gets older, you should look at her mother. Well, I'm a looking and I'm a liking. Fuck her. Out. <laughs> The evening will probably continue with more drinking and karaoke. While you won't be forced to sing, you're encouraged to give it a try, even if your voice shatters the tuba glass. This could go on for hours and hours, but if you're wanting to leave, the best idea is to find your girlfriend and let her make the polite apologies to secure your escape. While it's okay with some families to hug the mother and father as you're leaving, some consider that rude, so it's best to stick with shaking hands when you're saying goodbye. Don't be surprised if you're handed a bring-home bag of leftover food from the feast. And yes, it's impolite to refuse it. Well, if you were properly prepared and knew what to expect, as you are now, you probably had a good time, and you'll be glad you went. But what now? What does this mean? Well, to your Filipina, it probably means a lot more than it does to you. For her, it solidifies and deepens your relationship, which she's now hoping will quickly get serious. Don't think she'll just stand by and watch you move on to the next girl. By accepting the dinner invitation at her parents' house, you're now in the family circle, which means you'll be invited to all future weddings, funerals, graduations, birthday parties, baptisms, and family gatherings. It also means that all her relatives will have their eyes on you. And if you're seen around town with another Filipina, things will not go well. But I will be watching you, studying your every move. And I will bring you down, baby. I will bring you down to Chinatown. So choose your dinner invitations wisely. If you're not planning on having a long-term relationship with the Filipina you're dating, you might not want to meet the parents. Well, that's it for today, folks. I hope this was both fun and informative for you. And I'll be back in a few days with something surprising and fresh. Till next time. If you think about it, I'm kind of like your stewardess, making sure you stay in an upright position during the video and guiding you to the exits. The exits of all your worries about life in the Philippines. The captain has asked that you please give a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to this channel. And for your entertainment, we have a selection of other in-flight movies for you to enjoy. In the case of an emergency landing, place your head between your knees and kiss your ass goodbye. Have a nice flight!